In the hierarchy of needs, the first need of man is food. This has no doubt placed agriculture as the first profession in human history. From the early times, man needed to explore the soils within his environment to determine their fertility and sustainability, to cultivate various types of food, vegetables and fruits that will nourish the body. The experiences from daily farming activities from man has led to the growing interest by early scientists on how the soil can be better harnessed to achieve greater food production, not only for subsistence agriculture, but pave way for innovations for modern commercial agricultural practice. This understanding gave birth to the development of local techniques, which has transformed into the present-day soil science. The expansion in agricultural activities, difference in geographical locations and weather conditions has made many countries to produce various kinds of foods. Over time, countries began to leverage unavailable knowledge in growing other varieties of foods. In Nigeria, government's determination to promote food production to meet domestic needs led to the setting up of the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, NIS. The Institute's Establishment Act of 2017 empowers it with the responsibility to regulate the profession of soil science in the country. The vision of the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science is to become the firmest regulatory institute for soil science and agricultural practices in Nigeria that will improve the living standards of the people. It is also to increase the profitability of all stakeholders and guarantee improved soil management systems that will embrace environmental sustainability and ensure high agricultural productivity and food security in the country. The objectives of NIS are to promote and sustain high quality soil through scientific methods and regulate soil management to advance the education, technology and art of soil science and crop production in collaboration with zonal coordinating offices the Institute. The Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, NIS, has zonal offices in each of the six geopolitical zones in the country as follows Southwest, Southeast, South South, Northwest, Northeast, and North Central. In the Southeast, the NIS zonal office is headed by Professor Charles Asad, who is a zonal coordinator. In response to um, the problem of soils, um, we have projects sponsored by NIS and then projects sponsored by OCP. Uh, these projects are, are, are located um, at the site the, um, in, in um, Enugu and then Abia. We have five farmers participating in these projects and then it is uh, for us to um, get uh, sustainable soil management practices for the farmers in relation to these um, acidic soils. Uh, they are problematic soils and then the, 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 there are a lot of treatments using lime, using a poultry manure, using fertilizer, combinations and so on. Um, the, the project was started with uh, funds from Nice. Uh, we have done that for about the second year. The OCP NIS project also uh, related to that. We have already done that for one year. So we are gathering data on such projects to be able to uh, ask farmers in these different areas. This is you have the type of manure and the, the combination that will be able to improve uh, maize and cassava, by the main crops are maize and cassava. So, uh, so far, uh, the farmers are cooperating, and in fact, they are requesting for more to be able to continue the project. The southeast, which comprises the five states of Abia, Anambra, Eboi, Enugu, and Imo, with each of the states having a professor manning its operations and activities. The southeast zone was accommodated by the University of Nigeria and Suka, UNN, with the help of the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Charles Arize Chuku Igwe, who has a personal affinity with soil scientists. The southeast zone of NIS has organized various workshops where topical issues on soil science resources management were squarely addressed, relevant recommendations made to boost agricultural production in the zone. 
attendance were farmers who are the target of the advocacy, information and communication, as well as agriculture extension workers and agents. One of the main challenges at the workshop was how to deal with the problems of erosion in the southeast, as captured by Dr. Jidere Chika, Head of Soil Science, Department of Soil Science, University of Nigeria, Suka, with the support of other trainers. Degradation is a huge challenge, especially in the tropical area. In the southeast, for example, erosion is a big problem. Almost all the states in the southeast has major erosion issues, which is a very huge problem to our to the availability of land resources for agricultural activities. So now, um, on that account, we have different types of erosion. We have the sheet erosion, we have the gully erosion, we have the rail erosion, and a whole lot of classifications. But um, now, the degrees of these erosions vary. The same way, the methods of, of tackling them also vary. So, but basically, what we try to do is to do our land preparation in a way that it will discourage erosion from taking place. Again, we encourage a lot of uh, vegetation on our land by, leaving, uh, by not leaving our lands bare. That is, to expose them to water erosion or wind erosion. So, basically what we do here in the southeast is to encourage planting of trees, leaving vegetation on the land, so that um, they will slow the runoff and reduce movement of uh, our soil particles from one location to the other, that's the transport. So that's basically what we do. In addition to adopting agricultural practices that will keep vegetation covered on our land, that's basically how we try to cope with the erosion system. Then on the very on the gully side, we also have a government coming to help to check. But you know, when we have gully, it is something that has gone beyond the normal ordinary farmer going in to control that you know. So, but again. We limit activities at the gully sites in order to encourage the expansion of the gully. Then the government on their own part, state government on their own part, will normally come in to intervene where the case of gully erosion is beyond the control of ordinary farmers. That's what we do at the moment. The word life is smart. Is tell us, the farmers, how we can be smart. My word is smart. How do you make life easier? So that is the essence of today's training. To make our environment better off by changing the ways and methods by which we plant or cultivate. Okay. Yeah, like I said, it is an integrated area in that very approach of managing landscapes. By that landscape means anything we are doing on the land, please, fishery, production, uh, forestry, plantation. How we can manage these resources? Overcoming these challenges of security and climate change. Yes, we need to grow food. We are hungry. We need to be satisfied. At the same time, you don't need to work to damage our environment by the way we go about producing this food. Yeah, in mind, that is the essence of the practice smart. How we can be smart in in our agricultural procedures so that we can produce food that keep our environment safe. For the future. Um, if you look at the objective there, it says to sustainably increase agricultural productivity and aim for sustainably. So that if you plant today, you earn five naira today. Tomorrow you just earn six naira. Tomorrow ten, next tomorrow seven naira. Not when you earn ten naira today, next tomorrow you earn three naira. It's not sustainable. So the essence of this match is to encourage us to achieve this objective of sustainably increasing our productivity as well as the aim of and again, to build and adapt resilience to climate change. Yes, like a prop stage. Climate is changing. How do we adapt to those changes in climate so that we continuously produce food without complaining much? Yes. As part of its commitment to improving crop production in the zone, the Southeast Zonal Office also carried out a number of training and workshops on climate smart agriculture and good agronomy practices. What were the likely gains from the training and workshops? The practices are extremely important as far as food production and food security is concerned. You see, without good agricultural practices, you cannot expect you know, farmers to have 
or for the crops to you know, yield um, significantly for the farmers to harvest anything that will be very meaningful for feeding the nation. Really, there are a good number of uh, agricultural practices that are very, very important that farmers you know, should employ them in the field to be able to optimize production. You start from the crop, crop selection, and uh, the, the major thing in the crop aspect is what are the varieties that are available, uh, what are the sources of these varieties, and what are the real potentials of these varieties, cutting across all the, 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 the crops that farmers uh, uh, plant. So, importantly, it's always good for the farmer to identify a credible source where these planting materials is planted. Then the next one should be the issue of uh, land preparation. The choice of a land matters a lot. The configuration of the landscape also matters a lot. For a farmer to optimize the you know, crop production, he has to choose a near level land that where the kind of uh, runoff water will not kind of, uh, pay production. Two, where if you are employing mechanization, where the fertilization is very smooth to be able to achieve the desired uh, land returns. So, land preparation is very, very important. And uh, again, it's always very, very important that the soil, the nature of soil is considered. If soil is the nature of soil is very important. If the soil is just like the previous podcast has that the soil is extremely poor in fertility. Then what are the measures that should be employed to make sure that the soil is sustained for optimal crop production? So in terms of the soil management, you need to consider fertilization, which could be organic or inorganic. But most importantly, inorganic fertilizer application is very, very critical for restoration of soil fertility, especially when the soil is badly built. Or where the soil is acidic, because most soils in Southeast Asia are acidic soils. And the only way of getting of it or restoring it is by application of organic materials. And this organic material could be animal or plant or plant origin. So it is very, very important that this, a, a farmer knows the type of uh, soil he is going to utilize for any farming season. Then, Again, water management is also very, very important in crop production. What are the sources of this water? Do you depend on rainfall? Rain, uh, rainfall? Do you depend on uh, irrigation? But in Southeast, we only, only do special, you know, sparing uh, supplemental irrigation. In most cases, most of the agricultural production is rainfall dependent. So, source of water is critical. And also the quality of water that should be used as a supplementary irrigation is also very, very, very important. Now, in terms of fertilizer, I had earlier mentioned about organic or inorganic. And organic is very, very important that the farmer has to use all these uh, household wastes in the form of uh, prepared uh, organic manure. Or if he's embarking in organic fertilizer, he has to start earlier enough because in most cases during the planting season, fertilizer, you know, by fertilizer is scarce. And oftentimes the price is uh, beyond the what the farmer can easily afford. So it is very, very important that the farmer begins early enough to look for inorganic you know, kind of fertilizer and know the type of the fertilizer he wants. He should also consult the extension agents to be able to recommend the most appropriate fertilizer that will be able to be applied for the soil to uh, uh, kind of uh, give him what he needs. Again, in terms of uh, this fertilizer application, the quality of the fertilizer should be very, very important. Often, we also emphasize the need for farmers to apply fertilizer based on soil test. Soil test is very, very important. Because it's based on the soil type that you will be able to know the kind of uh, inorganic fertilizer that is uh, needed. It is also very, very important that farmers should know on how to apply these uh, uh, inorganic fertilizers. What are the different methods 
of the fertilizer application. Is it foliar? Is it a band application? Is it a kind of on the spot application? It's very, very important. So the work of an extension agent is extremely important in this aspect. Or the, the, the farmers should also be consulting the soil scientists. For the crop protection, it is also important that farmers should be able to know the nature of pests that invade their farms or that are prevalent in those areas. So as they enable them to know the nature and type of uh, um, pesticides they should be able to procure. Now, also important as part of the good agricultural practice is for a farmer to know when and how to apply most of these uh, practices. It is very, very important. And that is why from time to time, as a NIS, uh, uh, part of the NIS mandate, we are involved in training the farmers, like the one we had just recently, where we taught them on how to manage some of the inputs, resource inputs for farming. And they, of course, uh, they had the, the diffusion rate was very, very high. And they promised that they will employ them at least to be able to achieve their objectives. So these are some of the very, very important uh, um, agricultural practices that we uh, usually teach the, the farmers. Smart. Wasn't there a fault? We just of course know when the practice was the blood. I mean, the smart, but the blood Nigeria here. Now that means um, the university has agriculture as its base from the starting point. When the university has an opportunity, had an opportunity of um, supporting this by providing zonal office for the southeastern zone, it was a huge opportunity for the university and the university was very excited about that. So the vice chancellor accepted this wholeheartedly and made every effort to make available a befitting office space for needs, which we all enjoy today. And in addition to that, the vice chancellor, Professor Charles um, Arisa Igwe, has been very, very supportive. I can also tell you that um, most of the programs undertaken by the needs at the moment always will have the full support of the vice chancellor. When he is available, he will always identify with needs. The very first uh, workshop we had, which was the advocacy with the zona coordinator, Professor as we talked about earlier on, which was an advocacy workshop. Professor Charles, with the vice chancellor there, was a physical presence in that workshop. That is to show how far he is interested in supporting the needs and the university is involved in these activities. I also want to say that uh, we are very grateful that we have uh, the zonal office uh, at the university here yeah, because uh, as a department, we have as well gained a lot from having the needs here in the location, in our, in our faculty, uh, in our university. Um, the test kit, again, that the zonal coordinator talked about, as a department, we got um, about two or three test kits from the from this, which was a, a very big um, support to us. I also recall that uh, some universities across the southeastern zone also got the same test kit. So the point here is that um, while the university has tried to identify and support this, this has also equally supported our department. Beyond food and other agricultural production, the training was all inclusive as farmers and participants were exposed to the impacts of soil acidity. The objective was to equip them with the relevant knowledge on how to check the likely impacts of soil acidity with a view to improving farm yields. Uh, subsequently, we did workshop 2021 
on good agricultural practices involving extension agents, uh, NDP manager for many states, then uh, farmers were involved. Farmers were involved uh, from each of the states. So this workshop was a one-day workshop on the good agricultural practices. The farmers were also intimated about the objectives of needs and then the need for them to, you know, uh, adopt good agricultural practices that will lead to sustainable production, probabilities of achieving um, uh, food security in the country, starting with the Southeast anyway. So that was. Uh, uh, the second workshop. Then the uh, third workshop was on uh, good agricultural practices, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, involving the use of soil test kits for testing the soil and then the recommendation of some crops for acidic soils of the southeast. You know, our soils in Nigeria they are all acidic. So, um, that was also conducted and then the farmers were also, you know, um, given uh, training on how to make use of some fertilizers, types of, types of fertilizer, rate of application, um, time of application, the crops that um, the farmers, uh, not all crops, <laughs> use uh, every fertilizer. Fertilizer recommendation is based on crops. So that workshop was also done. Then the uh, workshop also on the, uh, uh, climate smart agriculture was also conducted. And uh, in each case, actually, uh, we, the workshops were done here at UNM. Then the second one was done at um, uh, Microprime University. That's the same workshop. For this uh, particular location, UNN, we always organize farmers from a point in Mugu and Anambra. For a location at uh, Umayahe, we had farmers from Abia and then Imo, because of closeness. So, um, this uh, uh, major work. climate uh, smart agriculture workshop was done this year. And then, you know what we are talking about, uh, uh, climate change and so on. So we try to get the farmers to know um, what we're into about climate uh, effects, that is, this climate change. And then we also gave them training on possible uh, recommendations that VAT, whatever uh, information about a good uh, soil management, and then crop combinations. You know, when you have um, uh, <laughs> Sometimes when people talk about soil cropping, that's your growing cassava alone, or growing maize alone. And then uh, in our traditional system, you see that most people grow uh, crops in combination. They had that idea about climate change. Because if you grow cassava and maize, with a sudden change in rainfall pattern, cassava will not be affected. But maize will almost get fixed. And uh, if you uh, only make the grower and you don't have uh, any source of irrigation or something, you, get, you, you lose everything. So we try to let them know that this um, climate uh, change um, is something that has come to stay and we have to have uh, agricultural practices that will sustain crop production. In line with its mandates of the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, NIS, in collaboration with international bodies like the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, Soil Science Society of Nigeria, SSSN, the National Agency for the Great Green Wall, OCP Africa, and Indorama, Elimi, and Chemicals Limited, they have been engaged in exchanging ideas at the global levels to sensitize all Nigerians on the benefits of improving soil fertility to achieve food security. This mandate largely been met through the hosting of annual World Soil Day celebrations.